Well, the shelter at home that is in place across most of the nation and uh, some even having a stay at home order on them has created a lot of challenges for people, uh, all people, but there are some unique challenges for single people. And the question was put to me recently by uh, someone in our church about, you know, how should single adults think about this and uh, how should they respond to this pandemic and the restriction of movement and all the things that they're under. There are lots of issues. And of course, so many things are just common, whether you're single or married or old or young. Um, As Christians, there are so many basics that are true for everyone. But Paul does make a distinction in 1 Corinthians 7 between those who are married and those who are single. And one of the distinctions that he makes is how single people have opportunity to serve in ways that married people do not, because married people rightly have to concern themselves with their spouse, and if they have children, obviously with children, and singles don't have that. I mean, if you're a single adult not who's not had any children. And so service is certainly a significant way. We've seen it in our own church with uh, singles that have gone above and beyond taking opportunity to go to the store for people, to run errands, to pick up medicines, to uh, help out in the logistics of what we're doing in our worship on the church parking lot, um, those types of things. So, man, I would say to single adults, one thing specifically to do is look for ways to serve. Uh, you have time and you don't have the responsibilities that a married person would have. Read 1 Corinthians 7, see what Paul says there, and then pray and ask God to show you how you can redeem time and service to others during this this period. Uh, t- two single ladies in, in Texas I heard about, they uh, got a, a big Easter meal together and took it to the oldest member, a, a widower in their church, and they served him this wonderful meal that he would not have had otherwise on Easter because uh, they had time and they had the resources to do that. So service is a really big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would want to give a sympathetic word to those who are single. They're in a real predicament. It's one thing to live in a home with a whole bunch of other people, and uh, I'm not practice any kinds of social distancing at all with my wife and children so i'm mm-hmm. around other human beings but some of these single people might live alone right i mean my goodness i would i would want to tell you you are in a situation that you shouldn't be in you are in a very tough situation so if you're feeling that way then that's okay because you got some crazy stuff going on uh, it'd be a great time to study so study the word read books listen to podcasts try to Get all that really get to the bottom of what's gone on. Try um, to figure out what has happened and why has it happened. And I would even say prepare uh, yourself so that this kind of thing doesn't happen again. So there's not this kind of um, overreaction to uh, a problem that comes. You know, uh, we were talking yesterday. At least in my lifetime, there's never been a time in America where people have been told to stay at their home. And that while there are certainly many situations, or some situations that we could think of that would be the case, uh, we're seem to be past that time, at least with yeah. this particular situation. So study up on that and say, okay, we're the next gen. I'm thinking the majority of single people are going to be younger. Okay, so what is it? Uh, would this have happened with my grandfather generation or my great grandfather generation? And if not, what's different about that that generation and my own? And what kind of things can we do to try to have some accountability moving forward. Yeah, yeah, I think that's wise uh, to study, take advantage of the opportunity to learn now that you may not have had uh, during normal times. And and then guard against isolation. You know, that's a danger, man. It's a it's danger. Hard, it's hard to do, especially when you're uh, isolated. When you're at home. <laughs> yeah, but you can do it. I mean, you, you make phone calls. And uh, we, we've got a, uh, one of the widows in our church and lives with her son. She goes out. Every day from noon to about 5 o'clock, she sits under a mango tree in her front yard. And some of our members have just dropped by and stood, you know, 6, 10 feet away and talked to her and read the scripture with her and prayed with her. Well, if you can do those kind of things, do them. I mean, if you can serve in those kind of ways, uh, serve. But if you're feeling isolated and you're beginning to turn in on yourself, which is what sin always tempts us to do, to turn inward on ourselves, if you find that happening, man, reach out to brothers and sisters. You're in a church. Don't uh, neglect what opportunities you do have when you're living under these restrictive circumstances. Make a phone call and uh, send a text, send an email, or if you can, go visit and maintain the social distancing that's required. Do that, but reach out and ask people to pray for you 
and don't don't let yourself dry up spiritually because you will be prone to all kinds of temptations that come with that and you need to fight against it. One of the ways you fight against it is you seek to maintain the relationships you do have in Christ.